Super League. Nothing personal. Word of the day for Monday. Happy Monday, everyone. April 19th, 2021. The word of the day is Super League. It's been the word of the weekend. I never thought I'd read so much about a Super League. I'm talking about football. Football overseas, which you may call soccer, but we're going to call football here on Nothing Personal. There is a mutiny on the bounty. The rich franchises are saying, you know what? We're going to form our own league. Screw everybody else. All we need is ourselves and a few other teams, all of whom are secretly as rich as we, as rich as we are. Knock, knock. Hello, JP Morgan. Hi, my name's John Henry. You may remember me. We did some transactions buying the Red Sox. Maybe. Yeah, you deal with the Mets. Yeah, you always want to put money into sports, don't you? Well, I have a great idea, John said. How about $6 billion given to 15 teams, about $425 million a person, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to form our own league. Don't worry about the distractions. Everybody's going to come out and say, we can't do it. It's going to be UEFA. It's going to be FIFA. It's going to be urethra. It's going to be everybody. It's going to say no to you. No World Cup. No Champions League. No Premier League. But don't worry. Don't pay attention to them. Because we're going to go out and get our own TV deal. And we are going to make a lot of money. It's a Super League I'm talking about. And I want to just give you a bit of perspective as to what's happening. And I wanna bring it really close to home. As president of the Miami Marlins for so many years, Marlins were a low revenue team. The Yankees hated the Marlins, not just because we beat them in the World Series, they hated the Marlins because the Yankees, George, starting with George Steinbrenner, now Hal Steinbrenner, hated giving money to the Marlins in revenue sharing just to have the Marlins beat them. The Tampa Bay Rays get money from the New York Yankees. Ugh. And the Rays can't lose to the Yankees. So the way Major League Baseball works is that there is something called shared revenue. The way the NFL works, NBA, they pool all their national revenue together and they split it. And it always pissed off the Yankees and the Red Sox. Do you know why? Because when a network does a huge deal with the professional sports league, they say, we want the Yankees on every Sunday night. Everyone, we don't care if they stink. We want them on. Red Sox, we'll take them. Yankees, Red Sox, that's like Man U Liverpool. We'll take it. No, it's not. What's the maximum number of games, according to the rules of Major League Baseball, that we can show your team on Sunday night? Because we're doing it. Marlins? Forget about it. No interest. Brewers, I love you, Yelly. No interest. Tampa Bay Rays? You guys are super good, right? But you wouldn't be part of a super league because to be part of a super league, you have to be large in revenue. So I've been thinking nonstop this weekend about what would happen if this had been announced in American sports. And it occurred to me, it almost had. When contraction was the word of the day, the concept of the moment when there was collective bargaining going on in baseball, they weren't contracting the Yankees. They were going to contract the Expos, the Twins, the Marlins, teams that can't hold their weight. Teams where when you're out negotiating national deals, the national companies say, yeah, take it or leave it. We don't really need the Marlins. My argument in the room where it used to happen was always to George Starminer, hey, George, I know you don't like giving us money, but I have a quick question for you, George. Who are you going to play? To which he always responded, I'll play the other good teams. But it's not fair to pay you to play us. And I thought about that every day since. What would protect our franchise from being taken away from us? What governor is in place to make sure that the have nots can sit in the room with the haves, level the playing field? It'll never be level. Level, make it more level than it is. 
And the protection always is that we were a member of a league. We were a franchisee of Major League Baseball, just like the Yankees were and are. But what if the Yankees said, we don't want to be in Major League Baseball. We're going to go meet with CBS. We're going to start our own league. We're not even going to call The Rock. We're not going to call Vince McMahon. We're just going to call the Red Sox and the Dodgers and the Cubs and the Cardinals. And we'll just play each other all season long. We don't need 162 games. We're good with 125 games. We'll play everybody 20 times. Who wants to see the Dodgers beat the Rockies? Nah, we want to see the Dodgers play the Padres. To which my response was, the Padres used to stink. And now they're good. And that's what happens in sports in America. Teams are good, then they're bad. Then they're good, then they're bad. The best teams are bad for a shorter amount of time. The best teams are good for a longer amount of time. That makes sense. All of a sudden, owners of Major League Baseball teams and owners of other sports said, we've got the exact solution for what ails us in football overseas. The pandemic has crushed us. We need to do a money grab to get some upfront capital in the 425 million per team. We then want the ability to have our own tournament. We'll play midweek regular season games. We'll have our own tournament. We'll have 15 members of this super league and we'll cycle in five others. Relegation, forget it. Do you remember on Levitard when we did an entire show on whether or not relegation could work in other leagues in the US? And we said maybe hockey, but doubtful. Relegation is something that large market teams shouldn't be worried about. But wait a minute. Relegation happens when your team isn't good. Can a large market team be bad for a long enough period to be relegated? Let's pretend baseball did relegation every year. Well, the Red Sox win the World Series, then they finish in last place. The San Francisco Giants win the World Series, then they miss the playoffs. The reason why relegation hurts is that you no longer are receiving the revenue from being up in the big leagues. You're not getting the broadcast revenue. You're not able to get the postseason revenue. All of the extra carrots that are required to run your business, you become ineligible for. How serious can this be? Can you picture a World Cup without Messi? Without Ronaldo? Without Pele? Would it matter to you? What about the companies? Hey, Coca, does CBS have the Champions League or the Premier League? There's something that CBS has that gets a lot of attention with CBS Sports HQ. I can't remember what it is. It is what, Coca? The Champions League. So CBS made an offer to broadcast the Champions League. They hired a whole bunch of people in soccer, a whole bunch of people in Stanford, a whole bunch of people in, sport, in Fort Lauderdale. They're very heavily invested. And all of a sudden, they open their eyes and they say, huh? Where is everyone? What the hell are Samson and Coca doing on the pitch? CBS calls on the Champions League and says, uh, we want our money back because we only became your broadcast partner because we were going to have all of the teams in the Champions League. And now half those teams are gone. What's going to happen to the teams who are left behind and out of the Super League? Poof. They may form their own league. It's called Double A Baseball. How's the broadcast deal nationally for minor league baseball? You happy with that? Minor league baseball teams are worth a fraction, a millifraction of what major league teams are worth. Their revenue is a fraction, a millifraction of major league revenue. National sponsorship deals in minor league baseball? Uh -uh. So all these leftover teams get together, they form their own league, their own network, and they go to try to sell it. And there's no buyers. So all FIFA can do and all of the other acronyms is they can threaten and they spent this weekend doing competing statements. Don't you form this Super League. Don't you form this Super League because if you do, your players are ineligible to play for the World Cup. Your team will be ineligible to play in the Champions League and in the other domestic tournaments that you all love to play and in all the domestic matches. The Super League said, don't worry, we're playing midweek. What's the big deal? John Henry makes me smile. 
John Henry goes from a small market owner in Florida to a large market owner in Boston. He ends up with Fenway Sports Group, buys Roush Racing, brings on LeBron James, buys Liverpool. And all of a sudden, his view is, if I can't get it done in the United States of America, I'm going to get it done in the United Kingdom. What are the odds before everyone loses their mind? I'm not going to do a wait to see, Coca. I'm just not willing to do it. Because when it comes to money, I get the distinct feeling that what follows is lawsuits. How are you going to stop me from making more money? Well, you stop the Yankees from violating the rules because they're subject to a set of rules as a franchisee. But if there is a defection, all bets are off. So all that's going on in Liverpool and in Man City and in Manchester United is they're doing a math equation. They get out their iPhone 17 and they say, here's what we're giving up. Here's what we're gaining. We've already negotiated with JP Morgan. We've got the money. We've already negotiated with the zone who's rumored to be taking the broadcast rights or among other possible streaming outlets to take the broadcast rights to this new super league. And if we are better off today than we were yesterday in business, you do it. But somewhere along the way, the fans, the stakeholders who have been around for hundreds of years have taken it very personally. And I'm gonna put my cynical hat here on Coca. If you are a fan of Liverpool and you sing the song, it's not we are family. Is it we are not alone? You are not alone. We don't need another hero. We built this city. You will never walk alone. <laughs> Would the fans have to start walking alone? I think at the end of the day, fans of these teams will get used to change. Fans don't like change. Fans like history. They like the comfort of knowing what's next, who's being played. The beautiful part about rivalries. While preparing for the show, Coca said, can you imagine if Auburn never got to play Alabama again because Alabama decided, forget you, Auburn. We're moving on. People in Auburn would be DBR, despondent beyond repair. But guess what would happen after a year or two years? They'd be fine because they would be playing top teams every week. New rivalries would be born. I'm not going to take the path most traveled and call John Henry a money grabber. There was a great three-minute video by a former Man United player, by the way, whose name completely escapes me because I tweeted it. Coca knows the name because he showed it to me. His name is Gary Neville. Thank you, Coca. So glad you're here on a random Monday with me. Gary Neville talked about how greedy these owners are. He talked about how disgraceful it is. What he neglected to mention in his three minute and four second video is what exactly he can do about it. Now the organizations with the acronyms can do plenty, but do you think for one minute that the owners of the clubs who are in the Super League did not know that they would be kicked out of the domestic leagues, told that their players can't play in the World Cup? I love players playing in the World Cup. I love going to the World Cup. The World Cup is awesome. It's got a huge broadcast deal. Hold on. Let me speak to the second string tailback for Man U and say, hey, sorry that you can't be on the on your World Cup team of pick a, pick a country. Say England. Say France. But here's what you will get instead. Three extra zeros. Are you in or are you out? People will run away from the World Cup so fast that the wind will be in their hair. It will be beneath their wings and they'll fly away in a way that no one ever imagined. This is a long way from being over because desperate people do desperate things. The problem is in this case, it's not just the acronyms who are desperate. It's not just the teams who are being left behind, but these larger football teams are just as desperate because their financial picture is so poor at the moment that they have no choice but to do anything they can to raise revenue, even if it means a defection, even if it means joining a Super League. Hello, my name is Elder Price, and I would like to share with you the most amazing book. Hello, my name is Elder Wade. And I would like to share with you how good it was to be a Heat player 
and a little bit of a bull player and sometimes a calf. Hello, my name is Elder Wade and I would like to tell you I am the new owner of the Utah Jazz. What? Yeah, it happened. Who knew that Gabrielle Union's favorite place in the country was Salt Lake City? Who knew that Dwayne Wade's favorite musical of all time, starring Josh Gad, among others, was Book of Mormon? When you say Dwayne Wade, I say jazz. Do you know why the jazz are called the Utah Jazz, by the way? Just a quick side note, because they moved from New Orleans, the New Orleans Jazz, that sort of makes sense. And Utah never changed the name. I think it should be the Utah doorbells. I'm going to ask the president of the Washington football skins to come up with a new name for the Utah Jazz. Not really the biggest piece of news of the weekend, but it was fascinating. Dwayne Wade said from the beginning he wanted to be an owner when his playing career was over. This was never an issue for players of yore because they never had the career earnings. They never had the cash to do it. But more and more players, it used to be that Mario Lemieux became an owner of the Pittsburgh Penguins because the Penguins owed him money under his playing contract and they were going bankrupt. They said, we have an idea. No cash. How about points in the team? Mario Lemieux said, fine, I'm in. Michael Jordan retires and he says, Bulls, forget the Bulls. I'm going to Charlotte. I'm going to Charlotte. Do you think that players actually care where they go when they're going to become owners? Because they're owners. They are owners. Dwayne Wade had the following phone call with Mickey Harrison. Hey, Mickey, you're so fine. You blow my mind. Hey, Mickey, any chance that I can take over the running of the heat? Because Gabrielle doesn't want to move out of Miami and I'm a Miami heat lifer. You know that. I know that. That little distraction of playing for another team was just that a distraction. We have multiple rings together. Any chance? Mickey Harrison said, hmm, let me think about that. Let me ask you a question. Will my son Nick still get to make the decisions? Well, I'll consult him. What about Pat Riley? He's old. I'm going to take over for Pat Riley. I'll spend two years learning under Pat Riley, and then I want to be in charge. So that's possible that that happened. But in the meantime, Dwayne Wade had met someone named Ryan Smith. Ryan Smith is the new owner of the Jazz. He bought it from the Miller family. The Miller family maintains a little piece of the team after the patriarch passed away. He spent $1.6 billion on a team in Utah. That's the city where I just went to a game. By the way, Coke, a big news, totally off the subject. I bought my first NBA top shot, a dunk by Donovan Mitchell. We're going to Sizzler. We're going to Sizzler. So I like the Utah Jazz because I was at a game. So Dwayne Wade meets Ryan Smith and says, do you like me the way Bruce Sherman likes Derek Jeter? Do you want to genuflect in my general direction? I'll give you my cell phone. We can have double dates with Gabrielle. I promise you she'll come to Utah once every five years. All I have to do is go full Mr. T and put her O-U-T when she gets on the P-L-A-N-E. I recognize that it seems strange that I'd be interested, but you're a cool tech guy, Ryan, and I want to be around coolness because... While I may be rich, I'm not wealthy. I want equity, not salary. Ryan Smith said, this is a perfect opportunity. Go call Mickey, tell him we've got ourselves a deal where you, Dwayne, are going to be in charge of the basketball side. Hey, Mickey, I have a deal that I can run the jazz and be in charge. Uh-oh, that phone call didn't happen. Mickey Arison was livid when word leaked out that Dwayne Wade was buying part of the Utah Jazz. He sent out a tweet, forget Myers Leonard, he's not going to send out a statement about that. But when it comes to Dwayne Wade, he couldn't be quiet. I want to congratulate Dwayne on his recent announcement. We had discussed having him join our ownership group after his retirement, but he was not prepared to commit at the time. Horse hockey. Of course, I'm disappointed that he didn't Reconsider. Having said that, I wish him good luck and much success with the Jazz. To me, Dwayne will always be a heat lifer. I don't know who wordsmith that for you, Mickey, but you made one mistake. Of course, Dwayne Wade was willing to commit to being an owner of the Heat. You were the one who was unwilling to commit to give him the power to take over for Riley, to take over for Nick, to give him a path to complete control. 
you were unwilling to do anything other than what your estate plan has always been, which is that Nick will take over that team. And I don't blame you. It's your team. I don't begrudge you that. But don't make it on Dwayne. Just say that we couldn't come to an agreement on valuation. We couldn't come to an agreement on power and then move along. But that seemed a little snarky for Mickey and he it was not received very well. How does this work for Dwayne Wade in Utah? Because I can tell you that Miami to Utah is not a short flight. It's only a two hour time difference in mountain time. It's doable. Fly privately, fly commercially, doesn't matter. Still the same number of hours. So Dwayne Wade's gonna spend time learning how to own a team, learning how to manage a team, learning how to run a team, learning the salary cap, finding himself a good administrator to work as the GM. And he is an owner in basketball. What do you think about a former player, a Hall of Famer, one of the franchise, I get Dwayne Wade for me is, is the Mount Rushmore of Miami players. Forget Shaquille, LeBron, Bosch, Morning, Hardaway. Dwayne Wade is Miami. They are locked in like this. Locked in. Locked together. I just put my fingers together in case you're not watching this, which you may be. Was it hard for Derek Jeter to leave the Yankees for the Marlins? Was it hard for A-Rod to say, I want to move to Minnesota? <laughs> it's not hard. This is not an emotional deal for Dwayne Wade, folks. This is a straight, power-hungry money, profit deal. That's it. That's all it is. He would have bought the Warriors. Nah, they're too expensive. Although the Jazz at 1.6 is not cheap. I think he got 5% of the team. It's still quite a bit of cash to get 5%, right? 80 million bucks. Not sure Dwayne Wade had 80 to put in. Although 1.6 is the enterprise value. So it's likely that's not what he had to put in to get 5%. We don't even know if he got 5%. Nothing's been announced. The only thing we know for sure is that times they are a changing. So I'm thrilled for Dwayne Wade. I can't wait for the Jazz to play the Heat when Dwayne Wade is there as an executive. Did Jerry West ever run the Clippers? Elgin Baylor, he ran the Clippers as a GM, didn't he? Famous Laker. Jerry West ran the Memphis Grizzlies, famous Laker. Do you think for one minute that Dwayne Wade and I don't mean to sound cynical. I really don't, guys. Do you think Dwayne Wade has a very visceral, loving feeling toward Miami and therefore would subjugate his financial interests and his desire to run a team and own a team because it's not Miami? Do you think that Dwayne Wade, who had a tough exit from the heat when he went to Chicago, do you think that he owed Mickey Arison a right of first refusal? All of your favorite players who you associate with your team and your city, even when they play in their hometown, which by the way, that Miami's not Dwayne's hometown, raised in Chicago. Do you think that those players have loyalty? Do you think owners have loyalty to your community, to you as a person? Do you think the owner of the corner clothing store has loyalty to the people who are served by that store? I'm sorry. The concept of loyalty has been flushed down the toilet like you're a Toto. It happens automatically. How Dwayne Wade takes the next step in his career will be interesting for all of us, but I'm excited for him. Hello. My name is Elder Wade, and I am here to tell you that I really love Joseph Smith. I thought that was a power forward. Oh, my God. He's not. I've got some work to do. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back to Nothing Personal. We've got a movie to review. We got to talk about the Yankees, and we got to have a fight with Coca. I've had it with Coca and his ridiculous rules about the Nothing Personal pick of the day. I'm going right to the nothing personal pick of the day, Coca. I'm going out of order. You can hate me if you want, but I'm pissed. 
The Toronto Blue Jays were playing the Kansas City Royals on Friday. The game got rained out. We told you to take the Blue Jays. Steven Matz. Steven Matz has been performing unbelievably well this year. The Royals are outperforming. It was a slam dunk Jays win. Slam dunk. The game gets rained out. Steven Matz plays, pitches the first game of a doubleheader. It's a seven inning game. The Blue Jays win. And that to me is a nothing personal pick of the day win. Coca said, when the game's not played, that's the end of your bet. It goes away. Well, I said, don't you think people would know that if their bet goes away, they just redo the bet the next day because I redid the bet. I mean, I didn't really bet. I may bet. Did I bet? That's for me to know and for you to maybe find out later. Matt's beat the Royals, but I'm not getting credit for it. Whatever, Coca. Why do I lose when the Braves lost to the Cubs on Saturday? Anoa got absolutely rocked. The Cubs chose that day, that day to get hot. We're 0-1. Luckily, we had the Heat plus 4.5 on Sunday. We didn't need one of those points. Do you know why? Because the Heat won the game. That was a pretty easy one. So I guess we're one and one, which means we're 51 and 32 for the season, for the year. I don't know what we are. 51 and 32. Who's watching a game tonight? I am. Who's obsessed with Joe Musgrove? Two starts after his no hitter. I am. Who knew that Joe Musgrove would give up a hit and lose to the Pirates in the start after his no hitter? You did. Well, Joe Musgrove is pitching against the Brewers and Brandon Woodruff. The Padres are ripe for a letdown following a weekend series that if you didn't watch, you're not a football fan. Even highlights. I'm okay if you didn't sit down and watch the entire three-hour game. By the way, Friday night's game of the Padres-Dodgers was a four-hour and 57-minute game. It ended close to 3 a.m. I'm so happy I can't sleep. I get to watch games till three. Five hours. I got bed sores for Christ's sake. But it was still a very good series. Do you know what happens to a team that focuses so much on a regular season series and then they have to go play another team? It's called L-E-T-D-O-W-N. Padres are going to have a letdown. Take Woodruff. Take the Brewers. Sorry, Joe Musgrove. That no hitter is in the R-V-M. I'm doing all acronyms, by the way, after our opening segment on FIFA and UEFA and wafers, et cetera. Nothing personal. Pick of the day. Take the brew crew. All right. We watch a movie every day. I've been waiting for this movie to come out, and I don't know why I read about it. It came out this weekend. I watched it. I had to pay $19.99 plus tax, so like $21.40 or $22.10, whatever the tax rate was, starring Bob Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk is Saul from Breaking Bad. He has his own series called Better Call Saul. He is a middle-aged guy who all of a sudden got his agent to get him a part in an action movie called Nobody. It is a movie that I will tell you Coca will put in his top 15. Why? Because do you know who Coca loves? He'll never spend $20 on the movie, by the way, but eventually it'll be it'll stream. Do you know that Nobody is really like a new John Wick? And do you know what Coca's favorite movie is? John Wick 1, followed by John Wick 2, followed by John Wick 3. And Coca spends all of his time because he's grumpy and annoyed. We're running late today because I was sick this morning. Not hungover. Don't be, don't be that way. I was sick. You know, I got the second vaccine yesterday. And I wasn't supposed to get sick after the second because I got sick after the first. Because I've had COVID. And the rule is when you have COVID, you get sick after the first one, not the second one. So I was all cocky yesterday, got the second vaccine, very thankful for the doctor who stuck my arm. Felt great all day. Everything's going fine. When I got the first one, I was out for 30 hours straight. Fever, chills, headache, fatigue. But I knew it wasn't COVID, so there was no mental issue. So all of a sudden, last night at about 9.30, I got this ache. Do you you know about this ache that you get in your lower back when your legs tingle and your lower back tingles and you can just feel like you're getting a fever? And not because I'm so close to my body because I'm such a hypochondriac. The reality is that I just know when I'm getting a fever. I couldn't believe it. Was I getting really sick or was it the second vaccine? Well, I was up the entire night, the entire night. Forget the sore arm. I was up all night sweating out a fever, trying to go back to bed. And this morning I called Coke and I said, we got to delay the show because I need to try to fall asleep, which I did. 
please get the vaccine when you're eligible and everybody's eligible. The juice is worth the squeeze more than you'll ever know. You will be free to hug loved ones, hug friends, hug strangers. How else can I do my New Year's resolution of hugging a stranger in 2021 if I weren't double vaxxed? I'm double vaxxed. You know what that means, Coca? That means nothing personal. I may be able to take a road trip soon. Road trip, road trip, road trip. Wait to see. So anyway, we're running a little late. Coca was a little grumpy. Coca's telling me that he'll never see a John Wick wannabe. How come, Coca, you are so closed off to anything new? Nobody is smart, funny, interesting. It's got Wonder Woman's mother in it, Connie Nielsen. It's an hour, I don't know, what is it, an hour 32 or an hour 41? I can't remember the number of minutes. It is worth every penny of the $21. It's called Nobody with Bob Odenkirk. And by the way, Christopher Lloyd is in it. Yes, that Christopher Lloyd from Back to the Future. And yes, he doesn't play an old man. He sort of plays an old man, but boy, is he in shape and ready to rock. There are going to be sequels, Coca. Still Nobody is going to be number two. I just made that up, but that'd be a good sequel name. You're going to have to watch it, Coca. You know who should be watching Nobody? everybody in the New York Yankees organization because they're playing like a bunch of nobodies. They have the worst record in the American League. They got swept by the Tampa Bay Rays. And my friend Aaron Boone, one of the funniest, most interesting characters I ever came across. And he was a Marlin for a bit. I don't remember how many years we had him, Coca. Maybe it was one season. He was just fun to be around. Aaron Boone was not paying attention when we taught him about team meetings. If you don't follow me on Twitter, David P. Sampson, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Thank you, by the way, for downloading, following, subscribing, rating, reviewing. We'll do an end of month mailbag episode, end of April. Get onto Apple Podcasts and do rate five stars, write a review, ask a question. Go on to Spotify and follow because we want to. We want you to because being a top show on Spotify matters. I have no idea how distracted I just got by pitching nothing personal to you. We were talking about Aaron Boone and the rule that he violated that you read about on Twitter when I tweeted it. He called a team meeting after a loss to the Rays, another loss. They can't beat the Rays. It's one of those weird things. They simply can't beat him. So Aaron Boone, a one-year veteran of the Marlins back in 2007, gets his team together and says, guys, we got to be better. And we got to start tomorrow. Hey, who's pitching tomorrow? Jordan Montgomery? Oh, shit. I meant to have Garrett Cole pitching tomorrow. Who's pitching for the Rays? It's an opener, right? Oh, no. It's Tyler Glasnow? Aaron, never have a team meeting the night before the opponent's best pitcher's pitching. Have a team meeting before your best pitcher pitches because you want to win the game after a team meeting. Because if you lose the game like the Yankees did, then your team meeting was useless. It may have even been negative. It's the worst start since 1997 for the Yankees. Lowest IPS, OPS, lowest batting average, the most Ks ever. I'm not shocked by that. Stanton, my MVP pick, is hitting some home runs, but he's hitting a buck and a half. Hicks can hit. Sanchez is back to not hitting after opening day when all you people said he's the greatest. Coca wanted me to shout out to the New York Knicks because I've been so down on them for not having one in so long. Do you know this is the first time in history that the Knicks currently have a five-game losing streak and the Yankees have a five-game losing streak? It's never happened before. Now, it's sort of disingenuous because the majority of the Yankee season happens after the Knicks are done playing because the Knicks are generally done in April. So it'd be very difficult for it all to happen at the same time. Knicks are on the win streak. Yankees are on the losing streak. People are taking over saying the Knicks are the toast of the town. People are giving up on the Yankees. Remember our wait to see that Brian Cashman was not going to make it past 2021? Although I did pick the Yankees to go to the World Series. So can both of those be right? Remember when I said that Aaron Boone may have a problem? I love you, AB, but you got to get more out of this team with this payroll. And Brian's got to get pitching. Corey Kluber, forget it. Herman, forget it. Talon, forget it. 
They've got Suris, and it's overflowing. The Yankees are frustrated. What would my approach be if I'm the president of the Yankees? I'm going down to have my own team meeting. I would have done it before Garrett Cole pitched, and Garrett Cole pitched yesterday, and the Yankees lost, so it wouldn't have worked. But in theory, that's the best chance for it to work. Or I would have been convinced by the GM to not do it until Garrett Cole is pitching against a crappy opponent, not one we can't beat ever, which is the Rays. And I would say, guys, listen, I got a question. Do you care? Do you have any pride in your defense? Do you have any pride in coming to the park every day and putting on the pinstripes? I can blame Brian Cashman for not putting the right team together. You're right. I could blame Aaron Boone for not getting the most out of you as a manager. You're right. I could blame all of you for not preparing properly and not executing that which you're told to execute. You're right. But hear me now and listen to me later. I'm not blaming Cashman or Boone right now, and I'm not blaming you. My question is very simple. When are you going to start showing some pride? And I'd go back upstairs and I'd watch another loss. I'd take a call from the owner and I would say, break them up, trade them all, fire them all. See if it happens. Do you think Hal Steinbrenner knew when the pitching rotation was being put together with Garrett Cole and the four people who had a potential to be good, but had really had no chance to be good because they were hoping for a miracle? Bud Selig always used to tell us, if you sign a player thinking that three years ago, his performance is going to inform what this year's performance is, and you're just going to dismiss it as having an off year or two, then you deserve every loss and you deserve every dollar you waste. The Yankees put together their entire rotation with that point of view. Meanwhile, Garrett Cole is the only pitcher for the Yankees who has an ERA below four. It's not very good. Wait to see. We got to talk about wait to see, Coca. Wait to see is when we say something's going to happen. And when it does, we tell you it did. When it doesn't, we tell you it didn't. Remember when I said Jacob DeGrom, who lost one nothing to the Marlins on a home run by Jazz Chisholm, the blue-haired guy with all the necklaces, who, by the way, is a great, great player. The one traded for Zach Gallon, the leading number one pitcher for the Diamondbacks. That's the win-win trade. Jazz Chisholm hit the home run off DeGrom. DeGrom loses one nothing. Mets fans, back page of every paper. Can't you score for DeGrom? And I said the Mets will 100% score for DeGrom, guaranteed. As a matter of fact, they're going to get five-plus runs. And that's when I thought his next game would be against the Phillies. When I realized there was a rain out and a snow out and a delay, he was going to be playing in Colorado. That's the biggest slam dunk wait to see of all time. Nope. The Mets scored four. We lost. DeGrom did get the win, but the Mets only scored four runs for him. That's a no. The other day, I said that Aaron Donald is going to be fined and suspended by the NFL. Aaron Donald was implicated in an assault in Pittsburgh. And I made a critical error that happens when you put a microphone in front of your nuzzle for 45 minutes every single day. There's going to be times when you're just going to be wrong, when you're going to jump to a conclusion that is not worthy of being jumped to. And then you have to be man enough, person enough, woman enough, them enough to acknowledge it. Word has since come out that Aaron Donald was not involved in the assault on the man whose picture was posted all over with a swollen eye and busted lip. Aaron Donald, who still should not have been at the club at 3 a.m., but that's another story. Aaron Donald came to his defense to help him to stop the fight that was going on. The lawyer for the guy who got beat up apologized. Video seems to be clear. And I did a segment before I was willing to see what involvement Aaron Donald had. One of my favorite movies is called The Paper. It's not on my top 100. The Paper is a movie directed by Ron Howard with Michael Keaton and Marissa Tomei, and Robert Duvall, and Glenn Close, and Randy Quaid. It is about a New York paper who has to do a paper every day. They have to do a headline every day. They have to do a back page every day. And the conundrum they have in this movie from the, I don't know what year it was, is they wanted to go and run an article on two 
young black men who had been arrested for murder, even though they weren't sure that they were the ones who did it. And what they said as editors and publishers, we only need to be right today. If we're wrong tomorrow, we'll take care of that tomorrow. Right now, we're right. I've been thinking about that a lot watching the Aaron Donald situation because I could just do a run of the mill apology and tell you that Aaron Donald deserves more. He's never had a problem, not just on the field, but off the field. And I jumped to a conclusion saying the NFL was going to suspend him, fine him, because the NFL cannot have this type of behavior from its players because it's happening too much. I did feel that when I said it, and I'm more than okay taking the no on the way to see and apologizing to Aaron and his family. That way to see was a straight no. Wait to see today involves baseball. Did you see what happened during the uh, weekend? Steven Strausberg of the Washington Nationals, the guy who signed that huge extension after 2019 when the Nationals won the World Series, remember? And he opted out of his contract because Tony Boras, Tony Boras, Scott Boras had negotiated a deal where he could opt out, and so he did. And he happened to be able to opt out after World Series, after he was MVP of the World Series. And the Nationals had no choice but to re-sign him to an exorbitant, ridiculous contract based on the fact that Strasburg is always hurt but happened to be healthy during that particular time. There's no greater leverage the players have when, when you get a World Series for your owner because the owner wants to run it back. The owner thinks because it happened in 19, it's going to happen in 20, it's going to happen in 21. We got to match you with Scherzer. We got Corbin. We got Soto. We're good. Steven Strasburg's back on the injured list. Shoulder inflammation, which is code for, uh-oh. We would say shoulder inflammation even when there was major shoulder issues. Because what you do to a player is you give him send them to the doctor. They get these crazy horse tranquilizer anti-inflammatories, which by the way, are probably not good for the player long-term, but the player wants to take them. We want to give them because the player wants to pitch. We want the player healthy. Take these anti-inflammatories, sort of like Toradol, when you give a player a pain shot so they can go play that particular day. I can't tell you how many pitchers I had in my career. It took Toradol every time they pitched to pitch through the pain. Not good for the liver. Not good for the future. So Steven Strasburg, who has five more years left on his deal, has shoulder inflammation and he's been put on the injured list. Now, when you're on the injured list because you've got a little oblique, Starley Marte has a little oblique with the Marlins, or you got a little knee, you stubbed your toe, you got a little blister, eh, those get better. Shoulder inflammation, following the surgery he had in the offseason because he didn't pitch last year mostly because of carpal tunnel syndrome, which got relieved in surgery. He felt he was good as new, except what you don't know because he wouldn't tell you and the Nationals wouldn't tell you is anytime you feel numbness or anytime you have an issue with your hand, your pitching hand, you change the way the ball gets released and that changes your mechanics and that hurts your shoulder and elbow. It's why we would only let pitchers pitch injured when they didn't have a long-term deal with us. Pitch till your arm falls off. No problem. You got a blister, put some cream on it and go. Shoulder hurts, take some Toradol and pitch. Elbow hurts, pitch. Oh, you're only throwing 80? We're losing games because of you? Your ERA is 6.6? Don't pitch. You can be effective and you're hurt and you're not signed? Sounds terrific. Well, Strasburg is signed till he's 38 years old. And if he's going to have the type of next five years as the last five years, then the Nationals have zero chance to win another World Series because they will have way too much payroll tied up in a player who his contract is outperforming him by such a wide margin. But guess who doesn't care? Steven, Scotty. They don't care. It's so hard to know who to sign to a long-term deal and who not to, but Bud Selig will forever be in my brain. You think that you're the miracle, David? You think that you've got the magic potion and that a player who's been injured doesn't perform is all of a sudden gonna be healthy because you signed him? NGTH, 
My wait to see is on Jacob DeGrom. And the wait to see is that he will not even start 20 games this year. That means he'd be missing almost half the season. We have that same wait to see with Corey Kluber, with Domingo Herman, various other pitchers. Steven Strasburg will not pitch 20 games. I said DeGrom, I meant Steven Strasburg. That's the wait to see. Do you got a Coca? Are we fixed? Because that's our show. It's just business, Coca. It's nothing personal. 